concerned about food shortages? But there's no way you'll eat insects. But what if I told you that you may not have a choice and that you've already been eating them for years? Hmm? Stick around to the end and I guarantee you'll learn something. You don't have to be an economist to know that food is rapidly becoming more expensive and its availability more spotty. I mean, we've all been to the grocery store and seen the numbers. Government leaders everywhere are saying that there will be food shortages, not that there might be, but there will be shortages. Now, when I hear talk like that, I'm going to do everything I can to increase the amount of food I produce here in my garden. I mean, need more food, grow more food. Makes sense to me. So obviously, governments around the world will be taking steps to increase food production. Well, that's where things get a little confusing. In April of 2021, the government of Sri Lanka declared a nationwide initiative to save the earth from our own geoengineering misuse, greed, and selfishness by having nitrogen waste. Well, that sounds nice. I mean, greed, selfishness, and whatever geoengineering misuse is, we don't want any of that. Hmm by having nitrogen use. Nitrogen accounts for 79% of the air we breathe. The top six inches of an acre of soil may contain two to three tons of nitrogen. Nitrogen is removed from the soil by crops, gaseous loss, runoff erosion, and leaching. The initiative included signing on to a green taxonomy with the International Finance Corporation to pursue environmental, social, and governments, or ESG, goals that included a climate-friendly ban on chemical fertilizers in an effort to promote organic farming. According to Texas a and University AgriLife Extension, efficient crop production requires an adequate supply of all essential plant nutrients. However, the use of commercial nitrogen fertilizers to increase production, maintain profits, and provide low-cost food and fiber is a necessity of modern agriculture. Now, I'm all for organic food production. Here in my garden, I make my own compost to fertilize my vegetables. But it seems like a complete and immediate ban on chemical fertilizer use by all of your country's farmers could be a problem. Fertilizer is an integral and very expensive component of farming. And I'm pretty sure farmers aren't just tossing fertilizer around like beads at a Mardi Gras parade. Now, I'm not saying change isn't possible, but a well-thought-out transition period might just be helpful. But what do I know? I just bet these large governments know what they're doing. So how's that working out for Sri Lanka? I don't speak Sri Lankan, but I'm pretty sure they're all chanting thank you. Oh. Burning fury for all to see. The Sri Lankan Prime Minister's house set alight. Flames fueled by protesters' anger. Burning fury and anger? I just bet nobody saw that coming. We have to prepare for a more angry world. Oh. At economic mismanagement that's left many suffering. Economic mismanagement? That seems a little harsh. I mean, inflation here is at 9.1%, the highest it's been in 40 years. It can't be much worse than that in Sri Lanka. Well, let me see. What is their inflation rate? It's only... Oh, 80.1%. But on the bright side, Sri Lanka has an almost perfect ESG score of 98.1. So no food, but an awesome ESG score. But that's just those excitable Sri Lankans. I just bet somebody else can do it better. Even with a small population of 17 million people, the Netherlands is the second largest agriculture and food exporter in the world, behind only the United States. Dutch farmers are obviously excellent at producing food. If anyone can make this work, surely it's the Dutch. I mean, windmills, wooden shoes, tulips. The Dutch government recently passed sweeping new climate regulations for reducing nitrogen pollution in some areas by up to 70%. The 25 billion euro plan calls for limiting synthetic fertilizer use and paying some Dutch livestock farmers to destroy their herds and exit the industry. The end result is expected to be close to a one-third reduction in the number of pigs, cows, and chickens in the country, and more than a third of Dutch farmers losing their business. So how's that working out for the Dutch? Oh. 
But on the bright side, I bet by now nobody else will try something like this again. In Canada, the government is moving forward with a plan to reduce emissions from fertilizer by 30% to help meet Canada's greenhouse gas emissions targets. For most farmers, that means reducing fertilizer usage by 30%, which means lower crop yields, lower income for farm families, and higher prices for families at the grocery store. In simple terms, the politicians cannot reduce the fertilizer used in the farming process for large-scale food production without reducing the farming yield. It's just common sense. So if I understand this correctly, on one hand, governments around the world are telling us that there will be food shortages, but rather than take action to increase food production, they're actually implementing policies that will result in less food being produced. If only someone could come up with a way to replace these now missing global calories. I don't know, maybe by changing the food supply and changing what people eat? Well, how about that? And as luck would have it, a new government-funded plant in Canada will soon be producing about 2 billion crickets, about 10 tons worth per year for distribution to Canadian and U.S. grocery stores for human consumption. Now, before anybody accuses me of making fun of what other people eat, I want to clearly state, I believe that what people choose to put in their mouths should be a personal choice based on individual preference, cultural norms, and informed decision-making. Now, if you've decided that there's absolutely positively no way you'll ever eat a scorpion, cricket, worm, or any other kind of bug, I've got bad news for you. Let me introduce you to this little guy, the cochineal. It's a small cactus-eating insect that when squashed leaves a bright red smushy mess. Well, somebody decided to take a bunch of these cochineals, dry them out, pulverize them, and then use the resulting powder for red food coloring. You'll find it listed as either cochineal extract or carmine in the ingredients list on the back of many products. Here's just a few examples. I also came across this innocuous sounding document from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, called Food Defect Levels Handbook. I was really pleased to see that they're looking out for us and what we eat. But then I noticed the subtitle, Levels of Natural or Unavoidable Defects in Food that Present No Health Hazards for Humans. That almost sounds like they're saying a little bit of this and a little bit of that in your food is okay. Yep, here's just a few examples. We won't even get started on lab-grown synthetic meat, GMO seeds, pesticides in our food supply, PFAS contamination, or RMDA bioengineered into spinach. What does all this mean? I'm not really sure. But somewhere, people higher up the food chain than us are probably discussing it. I just see the need for such a dialogue. And maybe even taking further action on what they came up with. Who knows? And I see the need for action. I see the need for a great reset. What can you do? Start a garden and grow as much of your own fresh, healthy, organic food as you can. It's time we take responsibility for what we eat. During World War II, 20 million people had victory gardens that produced 40% of the fresh vegetables consumed in the U.S. Ronald Reagan once said, all great change in America begins at the dinner table. Of course, even when growing your own produce, you need to make informed decisions about what you put into your garden. Did you know that one well-known, eco-friendly garden fertilizer is actually manufactured by the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewerage District. Weird, huh? Wait a second. If you want to know the only surefire way to keep squirrels out of your garden, check out this video. This one's pretty good too.